Welcome to Fans of the Forge. I'm Chris. To my left, we have... You have Sean. And to my right, we have... Teresa. And today, we are wrapping up Season 5, Episode 28, Steel Crossbow. What? What is this? Weapons experts. Weapons experts. We'll get there. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Let's just jump right into the episode. First off, we had Jeffrey who was a full-time armorer with 31 years' experience. Pretty Pretty interesting. Yeah, full-time armorer. That's, wow. That's cool. That's pretty cool. (laughs) That is pretty cool. And do you think that might lend itself to him having some good knife-forging abilities? Yeah, you would think so. So (laughs) based on that, I actually picked him as my pick to win, and Teresa picked him as the underdog. Underdog? What? My reasoning was if he makes armor, maybe he doesn't make blades. Uh, okay, there's fair reasoning enough. there. There's reasoning there. Fair so, enough. moving on. Next, we had J.D. Hungerford. He had s- six years of part-time experience, and he's a mechanical engineering student. And I saw that, and Teresa and I were watching, and I go, that's my boy! The yeah. ME's got to stay together. Not that I do any engineering yeah. anymore. <laughs> Mr. Marketing. <laughs> but marketing engineering. Yes. <laughs> ME's. So I chose him as my underdog, partially because of his being the least amount of experience out of the group and because of the mechanical engineering background. Okay. And so did you. You picked I, him as this I underdog. did pick him as my underdog, yep. And then we had John Francis with eight years experience. He was part-time. And that was Teresa's pick to win. And last was Michael with part-time, 21 years experience, and that was Sean's pick to win. Everybody represented. Everybody represented. We Although all... Teresa goes with eight-year guy as her pick. Yep. And, and not the 21-year fa- guy. Yes. And, and that, go, <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> so we'll get right into round one. These contestants had to use three different types of plate steel. 1075, 1095, and 15N20 to make a Damascus blade. Jeffrey was not used to combining the steel, but he went for a ladder pattern Damascus, and they all, when he did eventually get through it, they all commented he had a very nice hot quench. JD insisted on setting his welds by hand before using the power tools to shape the blade, which... I think I kind of get his his reasoning is that maybe he can he can tell better when he hits it with a hammer if it if the forge weld is taking um, whereas if you're using a press or something may, it might squish it too much and help, and you might s- not be able to have that feedback from something just right. squeezing down on it. So once his billet is set, he put in grooves for his diagonal ladder Damascus pattern, and he also got a good quench. John Francis. He ended up leaving way too much material in his billet and had chopped some off with the chop saw. But again, no issues with his quench. And Michael, his <laughs> forge was spewing fire out of the center burner like nobody's business. And, and that, Will Willis so nonchalantly being like, so, are we going to explode here? Yeah, yeah. Is that gonna, are we going to die? What's going on here? And it was Ben Abbott that was like, well, he's blocked up so much of the openings on this thing like left very little air uh pocket or air no escaped for yeah. anything to go so there was back pressure and uh the back pressure was what was forcing the flames out the, the flame top. had nowhere else to go couldn't yeah. go out the forward so i had to go up the tube and so he ends up just turning that burner off instead yeah. of removing a brick so well, whatever um he folded over his billet to get some additional damascus layers but he could not get it to weld so he ended up having to cut that extra piece off and just working with what he had. And eventually he does get his blade um, made, but it is very short and um, eh. questionably sh- short. Eh. But no I problems mean, with all right. So I was watching this. Dave makes a comment. Oh, gee, I wonder if it's long enough. It looks short from here. Okay, Dave. Well, well, let's get back to this during judging. Let's get back to that comment during judging. Okay. 
<laughs> just just set I'm just setting the scene. All right. All right. From across the forge, she's like, Oh, that blade looks short to me. All right. The specs were nine to eleven inch blade. Yeah, it's a good point. You can't really tell from that far. Well, away. that's not even the point. All right. I do have one other note here. At one point, I love Ben Abbott. Seems like a nice guy and all. But he said, it all depends on how straightly they cut their line. And I really don't know that straightly is a word. Straightly. Once you say it, it's a word. No, I don't think that's how it works. Because I just said all sorts of stuff that aren't words. They're words now that you've said them. Urban Dictionary, right? Uh, uh, I don't want to go down the Urban Dictionary route. Let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> Judging. Uh, Jeff had a small warp, but it was a good feel, even though it was a little bit heavy. JD, uh, the biggest concern was that his plunge lines go all the way to the top of of the um, the spine of the blade, but that could be fixed with grinding. John Francis, basically, they said your blade is sharp, and then comes David Baker, David Baker, who I I don't know what the the correct term is. He just kind of like so the blade's sitting there in front of him, it's like set blade did you measure it he's like the guy's like yeah i measured it nine inches from plunge line to tip dave's like (laughs) and he just kind of does this little (laughs) stupid laugh like he's like well uh (laughs) i want to check it out (laughs) so he takes out his little pocket measure tape oh oh, 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 oh. i got a quarter inch short all right dave so you thought it was short and it happened to be a quarter inch short could you eyeball a quarter inch from where you were sitting I don't know what the other lengths were, but come on, bro. <laughs> you know, like, it's not bad enough. And then Will's like, yeah, all right, you're going to have to go. Like, he yeah. does this whole, like, wince face, like, as he's, at, you know, when Dave says a quarter inch too short from the plunge line. Yeah. What's up? What's up, judges? I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, like, you got to make these comments. You get... Are the, fan, are the fans watching the show there just for the drama? No. no, no, no. I don't know oh, how many are, are <laughs> no, I, but, but I'm there. there. Are some, I'm sure. Okay. I, I don't know. This isn't a TLC garbage show. This is <laughs> Forge and Fire, a craft, s- skilled people making objects, making things. I'm not there for drama. I'm there to watch them make stuff. I don't. I don't need weird extra stuff going on. Like. But however the tests go, like that's enough drama for me. You know, if a, something fails somehow, you know, I want to see how it performs. I'm not there for, well, <laughs> quarter inch too short. <laughs> and with that, Sean's pick is gone. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not why I'm upset, but that's just ridiculous. <laughs> so, and remember how someone told us that the, the rulers they give you don't start at zero? Yes, they, it's right. And it's like a quarter inch off. Most rulers don't start at zero. Right, there's a like if it's a tape measure. Tape measure starts. Depend. I've seen tape measures and rulers before that start, like like we've heard that they start a little bit of a space and then the first line, because you can't accurately cut these things to exactly whatever the. Measure. Well, I, I think what people have said is that it's like a quarter inch from edge to when the measuring starts. Yeah, so, I guess people in trouble but oh. he ended up a little bit in trouble because he was going for a fold he had to cut off length he was just close but not close enough so i don't know if he could have started his plunge line earlier or if he actually needed more metal drawn out to to get there but but even then i don't think he had a lot of metal left based on what i don't know how thick it was but i know it was kind of close and yeah he lost half his metal half of his his billet, but I don't know how much he really started with. So, okay, whatever. Anyway, anyway, moving on. Round two, two round two. handles. These guys have to use. They must use three different materials in the handle construction, just like they had to use three different pieces of metal to make their Damascus. So Jeffrey um, is grinding the extra mass out, and he may have some laminations. Um, he peens his handle, scales on. He's using African king wood, bird's eye maple, and uh, a brass buck cap for his three materials. JD goes for a hidden tang. He's using carbon fiber, redwood, and uh, orange wood stack. 
a stack of those three. Right. So he had them as like blocks, and he was like, "I need to make sure that they're all like oriented the right way in the right order." And then, as he's putting them on, he's reversing them, flipping them around, and oh yeah. <laughs> um. And he used a wood pin to hold in uh, the blocks while the epoxy dried. So then the guy, the judge was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, he's just holding it in. Like, yeah, all right. It gave him the ability to then take his, his blade and start grinding on it, even though the epoxy wasn't dry. Yeah. Like, he, it would hold it in place long enough so that he could do what he had to do without messing anything up. All right. And John Francis goes for Micarta, Coca-Cola, and... Um, Something else. I don't remember what the other one was. All right. And he was setting up two block pieces, had them on his bench, epoxied. And then once they're dry, he's going to take them, put them as his handle together on the handle. Um, But then they, uh, what, what happens? The glue hardens and they're stuck to the table. So then he's like hacking at it with his knife. And, it's, and we've seen what happens sometimes when you be use careful. a knife. Yeah, watch out. But they they pop up in no problem, and he uses Corby bolts to hold them on to his blade. Um, lots of manufactured drama. Wow, how about that? <laughs> so JD drops his knife, and while he's what well, he was like messing with his handle, right? Yeah. Um, and then John Francis attempting to you know break the scales off the table with his knife. And they're going back and forth between these two things, being like, "Which knife is going to be the knife that breaks?" Yeah, and yeah. I know before the commercial, it's like JD's knife falls, and then it cuts to John Francis saying something I'm like, "Why is he talking at all?" Like they just showed a shot of JD's knife falling, and then it comes back to com- from commercial. They showed a whole thing where his knife fell again, but there's no problems. No, there's there's no there's no. It issue. was perfectly fine. Yeah. So, trauma. <laughs> and so, <laughs> my bad. So, <laughs> so, testing, strength test. It's a steel slate stab. So, they're hammering into these steel slates. I don't know, it was like five of them or so. Yeah. Um, Jeffrey, his tip held up, lost some of his edge. JD had some minor edge dulling, and John Francis's edge held up well. For the sharpness test, there was a tomato slice. So Jeffrey he had a good slice, but the loss of sharpness caught the end tomato and then cut all the way through. Sent it flying. Just kind of broke yeah. it off. Yeah. But I guess hey, it went most. You know. Yeah. Everyone did pretty well. Uh, JD, he was a really good cutter. It went all the way through, no problem. And John Francis, as sharp as can be, transition to handle is a little sharp, but otherwise good. So, fortunately, Jeffrey gets the boot, but the dulling of the blade and the strength test made him lose by a tomato. That's what they said. Yep. He lost by a tomato. Lost by a tomato. Yep. So, round three, we have the steel medieval hunting crossbow. Must have a forge prod or bow, a rolling catch and trigger. Must include six crossbow bolts and at least 13 inches with fletchettes on both sides. Okay. So before we go into this, this was a huge controversy (laughs) on a lot of the Facebook discussion groups stuff about this because they could not believe that these guys had to make crossbows. But when, before they revealed what it was, Will Willis called them weaplesmiths this time. Right, that's instead right. Instead of bladesmiths. <laughs> yeah. It's a little, a little ridiculous. If you're going on the show, you go to make a knife or a sword. Traditionally, you, but forge and fire could be forging anything. Well, here's what I was going to say. It's called forge and fire, not knife in fire knife right forge knife in fire it's well that and we did well yes (laughs) that is we did hear from some people behind the scenes that the show originally was meant to include all sorts of weapons that's true so interesting but this show is known for curveballs and this is certainly a big one yeah oh yeah but an interesting one as it is because based on what they had to do to make it um required significantly more woodworking skill yeah. than mm. um, than regular 
bladesmithing. So that means no bladesmithing. It was all blacksmithing, if, if anything. So yeah. You're not making a blade. It, yeah, you're making a, just a metal piece. And it depends on how you do the arrowheads. But I yeah, think I they guess really the, made a blade because theirs are more conical than the ones that that yeah, Dave Baker had showed had like blade, pe- yeah. almost like pyramids. But oh well, that's like typical like um, bow hunting like. The, the spear arrow. points now, yes. yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. I'm reading this one. <laughs> <laughs> so they get to JD's house. Day one, got the limb forged out. And then they skip on over to day three, where he plans to have a functional cross by the end of the day and maybe finish the arrowheads. Spent a lot of time on Damascus. He wanted to have Damascus, and it just wasn't working out for him. So he dropped it on day three, which is probably a smart move then trying to force this thing that wasn't going to work out for him. Um, and then on day five, he had his fit and finish. And at John Francis's home, his day one was focused on forging and heat treating the prod. Day two, he got stock roughed out in wood. Um, the heat treats by the end of the day. And then they skip way down to day five for him. They don't show any of three or four where he's working on the bolts and then finishing and testing the crossbow. And in that testing, he's like, it's a little loose, but it'll, you know, it'll be all right. Meanwhile, JD had all these plans to really secure this thing down and make sure it was like tight. Oh yeah. He like was wedging metal in to lock things in place. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it was a great design. Mm-hmm. And then they come in for testing where, um, Will Will's collapse. Welcome back to the forge. He does like, one yeah. of Chris's like, yeah. I don't... Have people seen when you do that or no? Because that's part of the initial thing. Right. That's usually, that's usually you know, before the camera starts rolling for oh, okay. the... That's not in the final cut. Yeah. No. Okay. No. Anyway. So for the kill test, it's um, hunting deer decoys. So they've got the 3D deer out with the, the kill zone there. And JD is a good shot. It will kill. John Francis misses the kill zone with the first bolt. And the second bolt, it will not kill. Not very accurate. Not not very often you don't get a kill on something. You don't get so, what? I mean the test was tough. The test was tough. Yeah, and you see his arrows just kinda like kind of flow up. Yeah. And it had to do with the shape of the, the way that the, the shaft is it was kinda yeah. angled a certain way. Yeah, it kinda dipped the nose kinda yeah. dipped down. Yeah. And so the it allowed the arrow to come up or the string it didn't lay flat the way it should. Yeah, have. it didn't lay flat, yeah. so it kind of... Because, I mean, arrows flex when they fly anyway, but the shape of the, the crossbow front didn't really help that. Um, so for the strength test, they fire through tempered glass, and JD's bounced off. It had issues yeah. with the soft blades, so for as much as, um, you know, John Francis didn't pass the first test, JD didn't pass the second test. Yep. And John Francis shattered plate glass first try. Oh, yeah. Um, and then they had a sharpness test, which was a bubble bladder burst. And I'm curious to know who fails that one. <laughs> well, you have to pop a balloon. They really just did that so they could have the, the slow-mo. Oh, like, have you ever tried throwing those darts at the balloons at the fair? Yeah, that I'm can be difficult. Oh, <laughs> well, they, they underinflate them. So it's just kind of like... Yeah, these ones were pretty much full of water. So it was like... Or paint or whatever that was. Oh, yeah. And so it was pretty easy to... Get in there. Yeah. And they both pass. JD flies through each. It will cut. John Francis also will cut. So each of them, two out of three tests, good. And, you know, we come down to the end to to figure out which of the failed tests was the worst one. And, it, you know, JD's the winner because of that whole accuracy issue ended up being more of an issue than the sharpness of the, the bolt tips. Yay, JD winner. And that means yeah. Sean and I both got underdog wins right Ooh. there. Two points. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. So here's our point tally here. Because we haven't recorded in a while and we've forgotten what our points are. We didn't are. look it up. So the numbers will be here. <laughs> and um, pretty sure I'm, and I'm winning. So. <laughs> oh, wow. The, yeah. That really, the whole game just turned around. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and that's the episode, season five, episode 28, Steel Crossbow. And remember to follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube, check us out on Facebook. That's really the main ones. Don't worry about Twitter. Um, 
by the time this airs, our first giveaway will have wrapped up. Oh, yeah. I asked about that. When's the final date for that? Well, it's, date-wise, it's tomorrow, tomorrow but this so. won't be out to by to then anyways. So. <laughs> so it was ending on it, October it ended, so <laughs> October 5th. You might have won it. Maybe you won. Hey, congratulations to whoever does win. And um, thanks, everybody. Uh, it's been a heck of a few weeks, and we're going to start getting back into the swing of things here. So we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye. Bye bye. Your hand blocked me. Oh, sorry. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>what if you do like a daddy shark can i do grandpa shark (laughs) it's everywhere